people <laughs> technical yeah. difficulties but i am here with carlos alvarez who um is the grandson of angela alvarez a kind of a phenomenon really i mean hey i, I watched this documentary and i i really had no kind of clue what i would be you know seeing and i didn't expect to see a 91 year old make her singing debut to a packed house what the, like what the hell like if, if, if you <laughs> told this to anyone they'd be like oh, what kind of story is that like yeah. what's up with this real life craziness man <laughs> she she um you know uh, well, I'll, we'll back up a little bit. And, you know, she, back when she was a little girl in Cuba, she um, she had seen, you know, Judy Garland on the big screen, you know, mm. and and she made this decision and her just choice in her mind that she wanted to be Judy Garland, the, the Cuban Judy Garland. You know? <laughs> she wanted to do that, you know? <laughs> and she had a gift for music. She, her father, um, you know, gave her piano lessons and, and she wanted to, she, she went from the piano to, you know, she says, you know, if I can learn guitar, then I can take that with me wherever I am and I can create music <laughs> wherever I am, you know? And uh, she's very smart. And um, so, you know, her, her dad asked her, you know, what do you want to do with your future when she was about 15? And she says, I want to be a singer. And, and you, know, we're, you know, she was born in 1927. So this is a different time. Yeah. And, um, and he was just, I think the, I, you know, he said, no, you know, I love you very much. You're very talented, um, but you can sing for the family. But outside of that, you know, of seeing for the public is, you know, he, he didn't want his daughter singing in nightclubs, basically. <laughs> and um, and so, you know, her dream was kind of, you know, shattered in that moment. And so she began to just continue uh, with her music. And, um, you know, she uh, met her husband. She, she kind of created her family. And she met her husband with a song as well. Yeah, I, yeah, was, yeah, was I was crazy. like, oh, Angela's got <laughs> game. Okay. <laughs> I was a bit like, all right, I don't want to hear about the rest of it. Tell me how to win <laughs> someone over with a song. That's the yeah. info I need to know right now. <laughs> she was a, a troubadour in her own right. You know? <laughs> and um, and so she <laughs> she uh, you know, she she went on and had, you know, she had four children. And then the revolution hit in Cuba and, you know, it's just all these dramatic events began happening to her. You know, she, she had to send her, she was taking her kids out of Cuba and they told her at the airport that, you know, I guess I'm kind of ruining the movie right now. Is that okay? <laughs> I mean, that, I, that, that's up to you. Like, okay, okay, okay. Is, you know what I mean? I, I try to avoid spoilers in my okay, reviews. So so. I'll, be, I'll be a little bit more broad. We'll, we'll <laughs> say that she lived, she had these very dramatic events in her life. And, and these songs became, you know, in a way, kind of like a coping mechanism. But I didn't know any of this. So I, you know, my, I have to get my cousin said this once and I always stuck to it. She says, I just thought everybody had a grandmother who sang amazing and sang in music and played the guitar. We just thought that was normal. That was in our house our whole life. But we, you know, as children, you're just like, you know, Nana, sing me that song. But you don't think about what the song means or what significance it has. So, so you didn't look at the songs and think, oh, that happened to you. You never. just thought they were just songs like song, like, you know, Britney singing Hit Me One More Time. That, that's not her telling someone to hit her. It's just a song, right? So you're just hearing <laughs> it and you're thinking, it's a song. Okay. Totally, totally. And, and you know, she's introduced me to all this Cuban music. And so I, I, I've always loved Cuban. So I knew it wasn't like music from the Cuban repertoire. It wasn't like, these weren't classic songs, even though they sounded yeah. like classic songs. I knew that they, they, were, they, 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 they were hers on some level. So. Anyway, she's the reason I became a musician. You know, I write music uh, for film and TV, and and I I I wanted to to pursue music because she inspired me to do that. And mm. you know, and I I she always encouraged me too. And so I, in my like young adult life, 
I said, you know, I, I, it just like dawned on me. I, I got curious and I said, you know, no, no, I'm going to come visit you. She lives in Baton Rouge and long story how she ended up there. But, uh, um, you know, the, the, I went there, I put them, I said, I'm going to put a microphone in front of you and I want you to sing me all the songs that you, you, you've written. And I thought, honestly, I didn't even know how many, I thought it was going to be a dozen maybe. And she walks out with these notebooks, you know, <laughs> and, and I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm like, wait, what, you know? And, <laughs> and so what I thought was going to be a couple hours turned into two days. And what I, what I learned in that experience was I didn't know my grandmother. I was, I was, I realized that she was a frustrated artist and I had no, I, I'd never seen that. So I never, I didn't know because she was telling me this and telling me that. And then, you know, our grandfather died before we were born, uh, my brothers and I, and, um, and uh, I, I don't really, I, I don't really know him, you know, and yeah. I just do think, but she started to tell me I wrote this song about him and this song, this, and, and then I began to like know, I began to see her like experience her love for him and how, and they had this incredible love story too. And so I, I just was kind of like in shock of it all, you know, and I, and I was kind of in shock that I never asked this decade earlier, you know, and, and so here we are, I'm on my flight back to LA and I'm just like, we, we have to re record this music. This has to mm -hmm. get, you know, the, aside from the little, the field recording that I did for the family, it was just for the family, you know? Right. Okay. And, and I came back and I, I basically called her and I said, Nana, what if we, you know, began, what if we went into the studio? I'll, I'll pull, I, ha I have a connection to incredible Cuban musicians. I'll, 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 I'll pull together an orchestra, a Cuban orchestra, and we, I'll arrange the songs for, for the band and you come in and you sing and she, just that was one I'll never forget it. She said, Carlos, my dream is to leave this life knowing that somehow my music lived on. That's 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 what I wanted, you know. And well, so when did this happened though. It was a few years before um before you know the uh the before the film was made. Yeah. So I mean, you, you say a few um, years, but she's still in her eighties. You mean yeah, she's, she's still in her eighties, yeah, but this is happening. <laughs> yeah, she's in her eighties, yes, and she's just a yes to it. But time after that conversation, years went by before I did anything because personally, it got, you know, it got kind of. I, I wanted to knock this out of the park for her. I wanted to find the yeah. right time. I was like hustling in my career and doing the thing and. And I was waiting for the right moment. And, and I just, I realized, you know, through a help of a friend, a very dear friend of mine, that that right moment is never gonna come. And he literally yes. grabbed me by the, the shirt and he says, are you waiting for her to die? That's what he said to me. And I, I, was, I was like, I need, we need to do this now. We need, we, this has to happen. So um, a little bit of a kick in the butt. And, and, um, and so we basically realized in the process of this, that this is a a story that has to be told in addition to the album and the music and you know she was what really like she, what i was witnessing is um you know my brother was was filming the kind of like you know behind the scenes of the album and um and 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 basically we realized that like you know, the, the way the musicians were responding to her music, the people outside of our family, the way they were responding to her, it was, it was shocking, you know? I mean, they, they were just like so blown away with her music and who she was and everyone kept saying, you know, this, this needs to be a movie, you know? So anyways, so in the process of, of making the film, you know, the idea came up that, you know, really, this album is is amazing, and it's going to it's going to leave it's going to you know her legacy, and she's just super into it. In addition to that, she really needed to have a concert. You know, she needed to to do that thing she was told she couldn't do: sing for the public for mm. the first time in her life. You know, I mean, yeah, that was crazy because we're, like we didn't see everyone, but from the shots that you could kind of get the opinion it looked like it was a packed venue yeah. right how because right <laughs> i think there was about 650 people at the concert god damn i yeah. mean look some artists 
some big artists don't always sell out their venues. So <laughs> how the hell do you sell out a, a Cuban young lady your first gig? How do you yeah. get people to be well, like, Angela uh, it, it, it was <laughs> It was through our, our network, uh, through our community. We had created a, um, you know, a, a, a video that was just kind of like a, a little bit of a trailer of what we were doing that the project we were doing and and that that video just built some traction and 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 got people interested in in it and then when the time came i i just i would just we just reached out to the people that we knew and mm -hmm. when they you know when they were like oh my gosh your 91 year old grandmother mm -hmm. is gonna sing a concert like of her own music this is crazy and and so it was just like it was overwhelming how 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 many people came out to see it? I, I we didn't know. We didn't. We really didn't know. You know, and um, and so you know that that night. I mean, we it was you know we had rehearsals. We had the, and again, she's a ninety one year old woman with a passion for singing, but that doesn't mean that she's a trained yeah. singer who's been singing her whole life. You know, on tours. You know, that's a thing. And and so you know, under, understanding trying to understand, because there's no rule book for any of this, trying to understand how hard we can push her. And, and you know, because she's just, I, literally, she's a yes to everything. So I'm like, you want to do it again? She's like, yes, let's do it again. And you know, I'm trying to listen to her voice and seeing if it's getting hoarse and, you know, through all the rehearsals and the band, because everybody is just there. We'll do this until she's ready, you know? And, and we had two major rehearsals and I kind of rehearsed with her, you know, in private and, and we did some different things and, and and um, she just was like, okay, let's do this. Like, what well, you know? And <laughs> it's so funny. It, she's just, she was just a yes to everything. And and then so that's. I, I mean, it's a long way to answer the question how the concert <laughs> happened, but that's how it happened. And that became the the kind of third act of our story is this, mm. you know, her living this dream and okay. and getting to share it publicly with with the world. Yeah. How did you? decide to put it together in the way that you did because I did you know because we start off at the Avalon right you know Andy got Andy goddamn Garcia right <laughs> how Andy Andy is you know I, I, we went to Andy first and foremost you know um for me you know he is a, a very much an ambassador for the preservation of Cuban music. You know, he released these albums. He brought Cachao, Israel Lopez, out of retirement. Mm. He's this famous Cuban bass player. And he recorded these incredible, timeless albums with him that have become very important. And 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 Andy, you know, he produced the albums with him and, and did all of that. And um, and so I, I have a, a big respect for him. And, and he has a real passion for the preservation of of Cuban music, and so we share that passion. And so I, I had I have known Andy, you know, for a while now. I'd met him through the industry and through mutual collaborators and everything. And um, and I, I I I you know I put I put what we were doing in front of him, and I said, Andy, check this out. This is my grandmother, and he was just, how can I help? You know, she's amazing. Okay. How how can I how can I how can I help? And so uh, that I, I am eternally grateful that you know he stepped on board and he just was like, how can I support this project? And so when I said, hey, we're gonna do a concert. Do you want to MC it? And 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 and, and he and he said, you know, I, I you know it's funny. He made a joke because I'm, and he has his own band, and I'm using half of his band or most of his band for this, right. for this project. He goes, I'm already using your band, so you might as well come on board, you know. And and he was he was um just a yes to everything, and um you know the Cuban culture is something very dear to him, and that generation of Cubans. Is very dear to him and um so you know again it's just sharing I, I, what has been amazing is being able to share her with the world you know it's I, it's it's like she it's weird she's our prized grandmother but it's like she doesn't belong to us she belongs like to the world you know because how many people she's inspired just in the process of this you know and and uh and you know after that concert she she woke up 30 years younger the next morning. It's inc it was incredible. Well, was I mean, incredible. that was one thing that you could definitely see throughout, right? Yeah. Just 
her energy, always smiling, right? So because <laughs> went through some tough stuff, yeah. always smiling. And you're just like, how, how, how are you keep just smiling throughout these stories? Is is crazy. I, I think she could probably get a Nike sponsorship, but she <laughs> is the epitome of just do it right that's what she is she's a cuban minstrel she's <laughs> telling these stories from pre you know pre-revolutionary cuba yeah. it's like i think there's a there's a generation now right who just buy the castro t-shirts and walk around with this you know iconic image on their t-shirts just a whole and know nothing about who he yeah. was and yeah. the impact that he had on this country, yeah. right? Even like, I have I know some stuff, right? I've read some books, watched some documentaries and things like that. I didn't know about like the, the Pedro Pans, right? That and the, the 14,500 children sent unaccompanied, mm -hmm. right? I, I knew, I'd heard that some people sent their, their, their children on, I didn't realize it was that many. Yeah. Right? It, it, like, and that impact he's had on the country, right? But she was there. She witnessed this, this whole thing, this era. She understands what Marxism and Cuba, Cuba, com, communism, oh, <laughs> good damn. Words sometimes, <laughs> but she understands the impact of these. Like people want to throw around these words as "oh, it's so cool" and we should do this. And but she's born witness to the impact of these things, so she can tell these stories. So it's just like where people, you know, you have to pick up a book to read about some things. Yeah, she can tell you not just with her words, but in her music. So it's this incredible thing, this incredible resource that, you know, is bottled up in this little 91 year old and it's incredible. And I think that's, that's what is so special is that, you know, she's, she's, she's here to tell the tale, you know, and, and her experience of it. And, um, you know, I think, uh, I think just the, you know, from that generation, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the, the the their experience and what they've shared is that the, you know, the the, the most and that this has been said more than once to me. You know, the, the the thing that the revolution really did was it shattered the Cuban family. Mm. You know, and 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 so the, uh, you know, I I don't know if there's a way to fully overcome that, but you know, finding ways to um, express your love for something, whether it's your homeland or, or your kids or your husband and, you know, the loss and to be able to, I mean, it's, it's, it's incredible. You know, we were translating the, the lyrics to her songs in English mm. for the album liner notes. And, and it's just, it's, it's mind blowing how poetic she is and the, the imagery in her songs and her music, because she doesn't speak that way. She just speaks. She doesn't walk around speaking like <laughs> like a Shakespearean, you know. She, she's 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 just so relatable. And and then when she writes these songs, she's channeling something that is is you know it, it deep deep. You know she you know she's she's always talking about you know she says the music is the or, you know is the the language of the soul. You know and yeah. I, I mean, you can I, tell that she has a way with like there's just that pit the bit in the um in the story where she's like um you know I, I went to get my uh American citizenship but I was like worried because I don't know English and then I was sitting there smiling and my husband he turned to me and he's like why are you smiling and I'm like I went in a Cuban lady with no English and I came out an American with perfect Spanish and it's just like just that right but putting that together having that wit right you could tell someone has got away with the with words yeah. and the language to, and, and just a, a knack of telling these stories just from that you get that from her 
absolutely. And, and that was the, that was the most shocking thing is, you know, you, I just, you don't know, I had no idea how deep she was as, a, mm. as an artist, as a person, you know, she's her grandmother. She's the one telling us to not put her elbows on the table. You know? like, <laughs> it's her role. It's just, you know, eat all your food and clean up after yourself. And, you know, don't talk back to your mom, whatever, you know, that's, that's, that's the role she had. And then she'd sing to us and play with us and, you know, and all of that. And so um, to just discover this artist that was my grandmother was incredible. And, you know, I, 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 I'll tell you this, Kevin, the thing for me that has been the most, you know, joyous part of all this, aside from her becoming this child again. And, and, you know, she really is, she's, she's turned into a teenager again through the, every time we're talking about her music and she's talking about it and singing and, you know, all of that, but just that, you know, the idea that this project, whether it's the film or the album, could inspire people her age to this idea that, you know, it is never too late. As cliche as it is, I, I, I truly believe this was the time she was supposed to do this, not any sooner. Yeah. She was not supposed to have done this. You know, she was supposed to do it right now and in her 90s. And so I, I want this to inspire my generation and, you know, or, or any generation that looks up to, you know, that to the el our elders and sit down with them and ask them, you know, what was the dream that you once had? What, what is your story? Tell me your story. Because the thing is, it's all going to leave with them. If we don't ask them. Yeah. And there's so, Kevin, there's so much wisdom in that generation i mean they will surprise you and and you know you 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 know i asked her once i said how come you never talked about this or talked about that and she says well no one ever asked me <laughs> you know and i was just like it just like knocked me over you know and so i hope this project inspires people to to ask and to because we very much could be the, 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 the generation that helps them to fulfill their, the dream that they once had, you know? Yeah. And it doesn't have to be being a star or being on stage. I mean, Nana's a pretty grandiose person, I, you know? <laughs> so so she, her dream is pretty grandiose, but I mean, it could just be learning how to paint. Mm. Or, you know, it could, be, it could be learning how to play the piano in your 80s whatever it is, or, or, or joining a, little, a local theater company or some form of artistic expression or building a, gar a garden, anything, anything. But, you know, I, there is, it's, it's hard. You know, your life, life gets complicated and life gets difficult. And, and, you know, as you get older, you start dealing with your health issues and, and all that. And that becomes the, the dominant, you know, thing in your life. But if, if, if we can help remind them of the dreams that they once had that maybe they hadn't fulfilled, I think there's so, it's such a mutual exchange, I guess is what I'm trying to say. We can give them that. And what we're gonna get in return is this world of wisdom and inspiration. And, and you know, ultimately, I think everybody in deep down wants to make a difference in the world you know whether they've forgot that or not you know and so i i don't know i, I think that's kind of been the most joyous thing is to see everyone who's been involved with this project just watch them come alive like they are doing something that really matters and they're helping nana you know with her dream and so you know i'm with my career i'm always grinding and and it's it's often about me. So, and when it's not about you, it's so much easier to share, you know, and, and to contribute, you know? And so um, that's, you know, that's really been the gift of this project is, is and, and, I, and I, I'm, I'm here on this, this podcast with you because I, I want this message. I want, I want people to be inspired by her. I want people to, to, to go and ask, you know, their grandparents, or parents, whatever, mm. you know, what their dreams were. And, 
and um, that's it. I'm repeating myself, but I'm obviously passionate about it. So. <laughs> no, I mean, you could see that, right? You could see that everyone involved was so energized, yeah. right? And it, and it's one of those things that, you know, sometimes you watch things, right? And you can tell people are putting this thing on. But this, just when she met all the musicians, in, you just saw them light up and be like, ah, oh, the words and the songs. And, and you just saw that this was this, this genuine thing there. Yeah. This genuine thing, just the joy on her face. Like she comes on the stage, you know, joking around. Like at first I was like, oh no, what's happened to Angela? Yeah. Right? And then you'd be like, ah, god damn it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And she's joking. And then at the end, right, you just, everyone just applauding and just the look on her face. Yeah. It, it was incredible. It, it really was. So you can see that just, you know, those people in the place, right, the impact that that had on them. So when the album drops, right, it's just going <laughs> to... <laughs> yeah, and when is the album gonna drop? We are we are finalizing the artwork as we speak, and um, I hope within the matter of weeks this will be out there into the world. We've we've got a, our avenue in which we're gonna release it, and and so um, very very soon, very very okay. very soon. Cool. We, well, we quick, owe it to her. <laughs> one quick question, right? Yes, sir. Why isn't this coming out on the thirteenth of June? <laughs> I, I thought, oh, that would be perfect, right? I thought, ah, oh, that would be perfect. And I realized, I'm like, no, oh, it's the 18th of May, right? What's happening? <laughs> The, the powers that be make those decisions. I had the same thought, though. I had the same thought. But, um, you know, I think, I, 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 hope, I hope this being uh, as timeless as it is, you know, and, and you know, important, I... I hope the release date doesn't matter. I hope I hope it just continues to just grow and blossom and and people get touched by her and 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 you know what the gift Kevin is that she's still with us to literally like experience mm. art that you know that she, her art and and her story she's going to get to experience how it's impacting the world. It's 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 a, it is the icing on the cake. You know, oh, so. yeah, no, that that's uh, well, seeing the fact that her relatives lived into their hundreds, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I can see that. Yeah, she, she's gonna be around a little for a few more albums, she worked harder than anybody. You know, we were up, you know, listening back to the takes at two in the morning when we were recording the album, and she's right behind me in the chair, just sitting there awake. And I was like, Nana, you know, you can go to bed. And you know, this is kind of, you know, an arduous process we're going through. And she's like, no, 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 no. You're working, I'm working, you know? And I'm just like, <sighs> hey, it's the great. artist. It's the yeah. true artist in it, you know? Oh, definitely. So, Where can people like keep on top of what's going on? Like, do you have uh, social media or anything like we're that? We're working, we're working that out right now. Um, you know, we're, we're starting to discuss it. Uh, you know, with, um, she's, you know, she's in, in Baton Rouge and um, her son, uh, Bobby, who's in the film, lives there near her. And so, you know, uh, the wish is to kind of find a way to get her, you know, with assistance, obviously, because she doesn't even know how to turn on a computer. She doesn't even have Wi-Fi in her home, so we have to figure <laughs> all this out. So, you know, finding a way to, to get her that window that we all have and we all use. Yeah, you know, yeah. into the world. And, and I, um, I think, I mean, ideally, she would be the one updating the world on what's what's happening, you know, that would be the best thing ever, you know, and, and just, you know, let her share. Um, but it's, we're, we're, we're playing with the ideas. Again, this is, there's no rule book for how to do this. So, so we're kind of making it up as we go. Um, but uh, she's, uh, the one thing I am sure of is she'll be a yes. <laughs> uh, uh, that that is tremendous carla so uh, when you find out yeah. you know pass the information on and i you know i'll put it out there for sure but Thank um you. you know i i think yeah I, I think people are gonna thoroughly enjoy this this is wholesome it is just heartwarming it's a tremendous story so um the 18th of may miss angela 
dreams come true. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm hoping <laughs> that everyone goes checks that out. Awesome. But awesome, Kevin. I really time, appreciate but... you uh, taking the time and helping us get this out there. Hey, my pleasure. My pl I honestly really enjoyed it. So, hey, I, I was glad to have the opportunity to talk to you. So Fantastic. thank you for coming on, man. All right. Thank you so much. Hey, you have a, a great day, all right? You do the same. You do the same. Right. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys. Bye. Right. Bye.